Take some too, so whoever or whoever you want. This yes, Mike. You. Okay. Um, you've mentioned many of our problems and how you handle them domestically. What about the war in Ukraine and the Israeli war? How would you? Great. So thanks for the question. So now, yeah, I didn't really get into national security, so let me just kind of give a broad overview of that. One, I'm the only veteran running for president. I'll be the first president elected since 1988 that served this country in a foreign war. Uh, I think that that's useful experience given one of the problems we face uh, internationally is the decline domestically of our nation's military. The culture, the morale, the recruiting is at a very low level. And I think part of the reason that's happened is because you've had political agendas imposed on the military. They're doing social experimentation. Woke ideology has gotten in. And that creates, uh, I think, a very depressing effect. Because when, you're, when you show up in uniform, I mean, one, you're writing a check to the United States of America for an amount up to and including your life. And people are willing to do that because they believe in the country, but I think they want to know that the people that are going to be calling the shots that may lead to them being in hard play are doing it for the right reasons and that they're going to put the mission first. Because when you show up, I served in Iraq, when you show up, people have different ideas, they come from different backgrounds, they have different um, uh, views on different things, but you check all that at the door and you put the mission first. And if you don't, people die. It's just that simple. So I think when people who are thinking about how they're going to get you go forward in life, considering the military, a lot of veterans are telling me they're, they're telling their kids and grandkids not to join now because they're concerned about how things are run. And that's part of the reason recruiting is so low. I think people want to join and, and want to serve the country when they know that they're going to be put in situations where the sole focus is the mission, where they're going to be promoted solely based on merit and not because of any of these other, other things that are, that are out there. So I'm going to come in as commander chief, I'm going to get rid of all the woke, all the nonsense on day one. The military is going to be about mission first, people are going to be promoted based on aptitude and based on performance. I think that's necessary to be able to improve the recruiting and then to create a foundation so that we can do the necessary improvements to our defense that we need to, to be able to, the number one uh, challenge we face is China. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a huge supporter of Israel um, and, and, and will be supportive. Clearly, that's their war. It's not our war. Uh, I'm opposed to Russia. You know, I want to see them be in a box, uh, but I do not want to see U.S. US troops involved in that theater uh, either. Um, China is the one that has the most impact on our, on our lives here in the United States of America. And we're behind uh, schedule of where we would need to be in terms of our military power in the Pacific to check Chinese aggression. Uh, I think it can still be done, uh, but I think you've got to be committed to it. And all they, all they respect is strength. None of this other stuff. They respect strength and they respect hard power. So if we have that, you can do. We also need to not be reliant on them economically for all these things that are so important for our country. We were never intertangled with the Soviet Union during the Cold War the way we are economically with China. And part of this has been something that uh, elites in this country have greenlit for now several decades. There's definitely people on Wall Street make a lot of money in China, but the question is, uh, just because they're making money, does that mean that's best for the American people? Uh, I think we need to protect ourselves against reliance on China. I think we put ourselves in a vulnerable position when everything from pharmaceuticals to things involved as the semiconductors are, are overseas uh, with the Taiwan situation, uh, all these things we're reliant on a turbulent geopolitical environment. That's not what you want to do. You want to control your own destiny. So we are going to be strategic in how we do that. And then here domestically, China has a huge amount of influence over our society that we've allowed to happen. That's why we ban them from buying land in Florida. Why would we want China to be able to buy farmland throughout this country or to be able to buy set up shop right next to a military base? I mean, it's ridiculous. And you know, and you see people now running, I mean, I get a kick out of, of listening to Haley. Her number, she was the number one governor of bringing CCP into her state in total investment. I mean, she had them right next to a military base. They gave China free land in South Carolina. She's in front of on video uh, for the Chinese company with the flag. She's saying that she works for them now uh, and all this stuff. And then now all of a sudden she says she's going to be tough on them. 
trust me, her donors are not going to let her be tough on them because they're making too much money there. So I don't think that that's, to me, viable, whereas I have a record of consistently recognizing the threat posed by the CCP. And so here's why I think that's important. One, for direct our security. China is the top benefactor for Russia. China is the top benefactor for Iran who is also the top benefactor for the people that are going after Israel. Iran is obviously going after Israel. Uh, but Hezbollah, Hamas, that's all because of the Iranians. And, you know, we're ending 2023. It's the 40th anniversary of the bombing of the Marine Corps barracks base in Beirut, Lebanon. That was funded by Iran. That was orchestrated by Iran through Hezbollah. So this is something that's been part and parcel. So I think you've got to turn the screws on the Iranians financially uh, don't let them sell oil. Uh, we actually expanded. I did a special session after October 7th of the Florida legislature, and we expanded our state-based sanctions against Iran. Uh, because any money that goes in there, they're going to turn around and do, do for terrorism. In Europe, the Europeans do not pull their weight with respect to their security. These NATO countries, you know, Poland does, Finland, there's a handful that do. But man, these Western European, and the Brits, Brits are pretty good, but a lot of these Western European countries, they're not doing it. They're expecting us to provide blanket security for them. And one, we just aren't in a situation where we can do that and do what we need to do with China. So I think our priority has got to be making sure where we're keeping China in a box. And then the Europeans have got to step up and do more to ensure security in Europe. And it's like some of these people... You know, Russia is more of a threat to them than they are, to, and yet they don't want to do anything and they expect the United States to do. So that's one thing I think Trump was right on, that these NATO countries need to do 2.5% GDP uh, d dedicated to defense. Uh, we should insist upon that, uh, and that will make things better, because those NATO countries would not help us uh, if we were in a situation vis-a-vis uh, -vis China. They want nothing to do with that. Uh, they're happy to appease China because a lot of them make money off that. Okay, that's fine, but then you've got to step up and do more in, in your theater. And I, I worry when I hear some of the stuff, Biden's rhetoric, when I hear some of the stuff of Haley, I do worry about what that would mean for U.S. troops, you know, after the election. I would not send U.S. troops um, for Russia and Ukraine. I think that that's not our fight, and, and I would not, as Commander-in-Chief and as a veteran, uh, want to put your son's daughters, grand, grandson's granddaughters um, into that thicket because I don't think that that would be in our interest. Yeah.